Once a month or so, medical researcher Lorna Vanderheg appears in Studio 4 to keep us vibrant and in a healthy frame of mind and being. Today she is into alternative ways to top up the human immune system. Lorna is a nutritional medicine and women's health expert. She is the author of several books, her latest, A Smart Woman's Guide to Hormones. It is my pleasure to welcome Lorna Vanderheg back to Studio 4 to tell us more. Well, it's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure to see you, and we've got your uh, latest book on pop. So there. Yes. After sexy hormones, smart hormones. Yes, well, we're always trying to fix our hormones. And in no 2012, 50 percent of the female population, the adult female population, will be in menopause. So that's a massive number of women who have hormone issues. Oh, and I won't make a menopause joke, I promise. Yes. yes. Uh, no, I won't, because well, some people just sail through menopause, some women sail through, and some are a little crabby and a little hot. Well, it's a challenging time, you know, when our hormones shift, I and mean, some women really do suffer. Mm -hmm. uh, thankfully, we've got lots of nutritional solutions that work very, very fast, and there should be nobody out there having hot flashes and night sweats without a solution. Really? Yeah. Uh, better do a show on that soon. We should. We should talk about bioidentical hormones and mm -hmm. what we can do to get those hot flashes under control. Exactly. Uh, how about mm -hmm. getting our immune system happening? Well, how do you, you know, know it's not happening? You just get a lot of colds or flu or what? You get a lot of colds and flus. Uh, you can have joint pain. You can have allergies, which are a sign that your immune system is working overactive. Uh, you know, you just generally are tired all the time. The immune system is a pretty powerful system in the body, mm -hmm. and it's involved in protecting us from cancers, and it's doing that due diligence every single minute of the day. Sure. So you can't go to the doctor and say, check my immune system. Well, you can, actually. You can you have can? your white blood cell counts looked after. They can look at the cells of the immune system to see how they're working. And so you could actually have your immune mm. system checked. And when you have a, a traditional, you know, annual physical, they will look at those things and they'll tell you if they're not working well. What boosts, boosts, it's so hard to say, boosts yes. immunity? Well, the thing is, do we really want to boost the immune system? I don't know. You know, we learned during <laughs> SARS that that wasn't a good thing. The people mm. that they boosted their immune system, they actually died faster. And so we've really? learned that we really don't want to boost the immune system. We want to balance it. We want to make it stronger. It's like your army. So we want to have a really strong army that's going to seek, recognize, mm -hmm. and destroy viruses, bacteria, and other invaders as soon as they appear. And your body is doing that every day. So better question, how to keep uh, the human immune system healthy? Right. Happening. Um, well, don't eat sugar because one teaspoon of white sugar will shut down your immune cells for up to eight hours. Uh, hidden sugar or... Just sugars in general. Sugars and in we general. eat 150 pounds of sugar per person per year. Really? And Hidden we in drink. everything. And we, and we drink, yes. And there's which sugar is, in wine. There, I there's hear sugar tell. in all alcohol, yes. So that's not such a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so de stressing our life, cutting down on sugar, those things. But the best things for fighting colds and flu are things like uh, washing your hands frequently, drinking water. People don't know why the drinking water thing, but. And it's mainly because you want to keep the fluid in your eyes, nose, and mouth well hydrated because the fluid is full of your army. Every time you touch your finger to your nose and your mouth and your eyes, which we do hundreds of times a day, you are introducing viruses and bacteria and other bugs into the body. And so if you have a very well hydrated system, the immune system is going to be able to do its job better. Really? Well, uh, we're kind of living in a world of elbows. We are. I don't know if you've noticed, but people are like bumping elbows and sneezing into their elbows and using elbows <laughs> to, to open doors. To open doors. Right. Uh, you know, that high tech, high touch situation is a little right. compromised. So, um, if you just drink a lot of water, d does your body absorb it or do you have to put something in the water? And I asked this question because there was a, a trend for a while to put chia seeds in water. Right. Well, you know, the key is just to make, in regards to the immune system, and of course there's always different uh, issues, but in regards to the immune system, we just want to make sure we're well hydrated. So mm -hmm. if you're going to drink alcohol, make sure you have a couple of glasses of water as well. Right. And, uh, you know, wash your hands frequently, get eight hours of sleep at night. Those are important things to do. And take your multivitamin, probably well, the best thing you can do for the immune a system. A multivite. Yeah. And, and what about that eight hours of sleep? Who gets eight hours of sleep? 
Well, you need at least seven hours minimum. <laughs> Eight is optimal and uh, probably not many people because 72% no. of Canadians are not sleeping at night. Well, and, and to sleep all in a row is the problem, right. I find. Like you get four, you wake up, it's three in the morning, you're, com you're communing with a Buddhist or something. I have no idea. Or you're yes. worrying. Yes. Uh, experiencing a little monkey brain and then you go back to sleep so if you get eight like in the vicinity <laughs> does uh, that help well yes I mean as long as you're in bed and you're lying there and you're resting for eight hours but you know I in the smart woman's guide to hormones I have an entire chapter dedicated mm -hmm. to getting you to sleep because right. it's so incredibly important and in regards to the immune system you know, th this is a system we don't think much about until we have a flu outbreak or until we have, you know, some mm -hmm. weird disease floating around. Well, Lancet had a new study on uh, flu vaccines. And I know it's always controversial and the public health officers say no matter what, get a, a flu shot. I've never gotten a flu shot. I'm just lucky I have an immune system that seems to ward off the virus. Right. Well, you're not lucky. You actually take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I know you take vitamins, you mm -hmm. eat well. Uh, you stay thin, you do all of the right things to keep your immune system strong. Uh, in regards to the flu vaccine, I've never had a flu vaccine either, and nobody I love would have a flu, flu vaccine either because of the, you know, the negative situation with it. The problem I find with the flu vaccine, you know, and thankfully the Lancet came clean and said, you know, it's only about less than 35% effective in the adult population. And in the elderly, they couldn't even give any statistics. So really, and that's because it's when you're just one study, right? In fairness. Oh no, they or looked at it? 31 studies. Okay. So this was a very good study because they they did a meta analysis of all the studies on the flu vaccine. So they finally came clean because we've had you know one or two, and then mm -hmm. we have a few good ones, and then we have one or two that are bad. But they actually looked at all of them. And they picked 31 out of all of the flu vaccine studies that were done. In the elderly, what happens is they're old, so their immune systems don't work well in the first place. So when you get the vaccine, you don't produce any antibodies against the flu, so you're actually not protected. And the problem I have with the flu vaccine is people think they're protected when they get the flu vaccine. So they don't do all the other good things, like wash okay. your hands and drink water. Sure, and continue to do the good things. Yeah. That's the flu vaccine, not the magic cancer. Right. And I'm sure like any vaccine, there's side effects. There Must are, be. and you know, um, thankfully they've cleaned up a lot of vaccines in Canada. They've taken thimerosal out, which is a mercury preservative. But in the influenza vaccine, it is still present. So that's another concern that people should have because we know mercury is linked to memory decline and mm. it's a toxin and other problems with that. So, you know, if you really want to look after your immune system, a great multivitamin that's got vitamin C in it and zinc and selenium, all the things that you need to get a healthy immune system would be the best way to go. And then do all the other good things like don't touch the doorknobs. Right. Go yeah. back to the elbow. Yes, yes. Go back to the elbow. So uh, a multivitamin, but there must be others. Is there a specific sure. vitamin like a D or an E or uh, a specific food you should eat? I know they always say eat salmon and pumpkin and dark leafy greens and yogurt. Right. right. Well, those are all good things to do, and we should eat those kinds of mm -hmm. things every day. You know, we should be eating lots of vegetables and, you know, limit the fruit. Uh, fruit juice is not the best thing to consume when you have a cold or flu because of all the fruit sugar in it. Uh, herbal teas would probably be better if you're an adult, and lots of really? water would so be So limit better. the fruit because yeah. our grannies used to say, well, dear, you better squeeze the orange juice and get a lot of it in you if you're getting colds. Right, because they wanted you to load up on the vitamin C. Mm -hmm. And and that's true. And I mean, we want to have lots of vitamin C when we're sick. Echinacea you should not take every day because they actually did studies in Seattle where they found it reduced the ability of the immune system to fight colds and flu. Really? So it's but, hard to sort that out because for a while they uh, they yeah. say, whoever they are. The researchers. The researchers. Uh, and yeah. it just It almost, it's uh, like Topsy. It's topples down from somewhere we don't know where but uh, it's the uh, not the drug of choice but the potion of choice and echinacea well, had a big run for a while. Well echinacea is great at the onset of a cold or flu so you should have it in your bathroom cabinet mm. so that the first time you feel a sniffle you take it just like the vitamin C and the multivitamins and the zinc and the selenium which are so important for the immune system right. and vitamin D is also important but thankfully everybody's now taking mm -hmm. that on a daily basis. For sure. Those things are all great. The, the thing we have to re remember is that you want to take certain things every day to prevent colds and flus and then if you get a cold or flu that's when you want to start drinking lots of water herbal teas take your echinacea and you know there's mushroom supplements there's all kinds of great 
uh, nutrients for enhancing the ability of the immune army. Okay, so the immune army, when I get anything, uh, a sore throat, I just feel fluey, I take oil of oregano. Yes. Um, a few I figure drops. it kills about anything. Well, oil of oregano has actually Except been you. found to uh, work quite well for funguses and bacteria, um, viruses as well. And you, you would, you know, if you can stomach it, you can use the drops mm. directly and or you can use them in capsules. So it's, yeah, it's one of the things. Yeah, the drops under the tongue are not bad. A little hot. Oh, it works fabulous. But it, it seems to work and I'm not making that up because it's, if I get it right away, it seems right. to take away... And not the use, evil cold. And not I know use, we haven't solved it, but yeah, and we want to avoid all these antibacterial agents because, first off, they don't work on viruses; they only work on bacteria. And so, people at cold season are like furiously using these uh, mm -hmm. antiseptic, antibacterial type agents. And Tufts University actually found it creates superbugs, which is really? is definitely not a positive. No, thing. and so you have an event coming up. I do. November I have a second. That's right in North Vancouver, and uh, the location and all that information. I know they're going to post on mm -hmm. on your show, okay. and on my website as well. All right. Yes. Well, nice to see you. Good to see I'll you. I'll be reading up on a smart woman's guide to those hormones. Hormones, yes. Mm -hmm, the hormones <laughs> <laughs> and the harmonies. Yes. Well, we want to keep harmonized and balanced and we have do. a strong immune system. Why not? We do. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Uh, Lorna Vanderhaeg. Remember, you can catch all of our conversations on YouTube or follow us on Twitter at Fanny Studio 4.